चैप्टर थर्टीन द स्टेट ऑफ बीइंग रुद्राज इज टीम इन द किंगडम इज स्टार्टेड टू फ्लरिश लाइक फ्रेश ब्लूम्स ऑन अ ट्री दैट हैड बीन बैरन फॉर सो मेनी ब्लीक इयर्स होपफुल फॉर द माइल्डेस्ट शावर टू ड्रेंच इट्स ड्राई ब्रांचेस नॉट ओनली हिज सिंगुलर स्पंक बट हिज काइंडनेस फेयरनेस एंड रिगार्ड एन इक्वालिटी therapeutic attachment with commons and justice for all bedecked him with a super heroic icon for the entire youth of the capital some locals would call him the savior of mankind some would say that he was a divine spirit in the human form and some would even call him the incarnation of shri krishna himself there was not a single day when he didn't earn adoration of mothers who would offer him the best of their preparations and how rudra would cherish each and every dish immersed in their sweet syruped love not even an afternoon when inquisitive striplings didn't take the combat tips from him not a single evening when pretty damsels didn't try to allure him with their charm and not even one night when rudra could sleep without the slink of madhvi's explicit depiction before his buoyant eyes before sinking into the time of inaction this abundance of love he could share with all alas except the one unloved however his inner state of being was in his stiff control to be revealed through those outward expressions that had frozen like a lifeless stone He was seen cast his eyes to the ground while he wandered across the palace every dance had paused and every song had licensed for him the only sound rushed in and around him was the voice he heard in his first visit to surshila every time when it would hum in his ears he would give it a harsh jolt to shrike it off his mind but it just wouldn't leave and come back again and again for there is an explicit love for the one close to your pumping heart there is a world for the special person trailing in the back of your mind hence it is the right way we love with care always giving unconditionally whereas madhvi utterly drained away by the frequent incidents quit conversing much with people around her frothiness of her lively astute existence had crowded behind the layers of perpetual scuffling thoughts the dark night hadn't left for her yet it stayed with her in morning prayers it sounded in her gardens rolled around her large chamber and echoed in her dreams in such blizzard there was no way to know which direction she would lead to the further the usual landmark of faith were hidden behind the twist that swirled so densely the long looked for transformation in rosan that should have added to her content and ease could bring no resolution to her tormented soul that had wrapped in a quiet grief that subsided deep inside like the germ seed of despair just waiting for the apt circumstances to grow to send out roots to choke the hope out of her heart even though she affirmed that she would never let her inner war uncover yet struggled to go by the moment if by chance they would cross their paths and would not even exchange a look in the hindrance of oozing epiphany that she might reveal in her sights struck together it's that they ununited but united by feelings and corresponding emotions indeed life had not settled its tests for her it yet had more to tell more to show and more to try all she could do was to wait while the darkness came down soon and prayed that the dawn was not far after here vishnu karma in all this cacophony of love pain and war was observing everything quite patiently and no wise man's eyes in the whole universe could prove his insightfulness wrong about the calculations of the things that had happened as well as things that were now to take the charge he was skillful in devising and thoughtful in all anticipation still there was just one apprehension seemed to suck the nectar of his wit and conceit that there was something precious to lose in order to gain something truly worthy of it 
it is fine getting lost in the right direction rather wandering on the safe secure street which ends up leaving multiple roads in all different directions with no end murmured vishnu karma gazing at the flaring flag of surishala in the bright moonlight he perhaps was the strongest pillar so far holding on to the right directions with his strong determination now utterly perplexed by the weird recurrent occurrences king vajrveer had frequent sleepless nights which he spent strolling across his room garden and terraces on one end he was worried about his kingdom and people security and on the other a worthy successor for his throne nevertheless he still clenched on to the hope for his son to inhabit it and bless the kingdom with a future heir too his hopes were little streak of a silver sky hidden behind the shadowless world of despair and agony and how he wished it to crack out with no delay any further as each moment felt as piercing as arjuna's sped arrows in bhishma's fragile body gajradhan and ulkasur now highly disappointed wanted to take revenge not only from the king and vishnu karma but now also from rudra and madhvi Gajradhan roared like a furious lion swearing on to give Vajravid the most reprehensible crush by dragging Madhvi by her hair for having mocked at him so repugnantly in disgust hammering Rudra endlessly to his last breath and ripping Vishnu Karma into innumerable pieces Ulkasur was never afraid of his anger which he witnessed then when it came as ferocious fire burning hot and fast ready to engulf whatever fell its way gajradhan's lethal stare felt painful and piercing his glare was tearing ulkasur's heart apart with a blinding teal light both of them were exhaustively vengeful and mean but anger control was one thing that ulkasur had adeptly been better than his nephew he had to take an immediate control over the situation before gajradhan's futile rage could blow into something vain and destroy more of their own schemes and endeavors than being used in the right place and at the right time his brain started racing for ways to cut down the obstructing root that were deep and spreading over his inclinations it did not take more time for him to convince his hard-nosed nephew that he had already woven his impenetrable plans on clutching the destiny in their hands by then he further revealed to gajradhan that he would propose to king vajravir to play a friendly match of chess in guise of an offer to maintain the harmony and camaraderie between the two kingdoms in hide of what he would be able to wolf down what he assumed belonged to him from the king and also from the savior This time he was somehow very sure of his absolute winning for some obscure reason there was an emotional tempest in full force in all the lives whipping down their sensations peace solace and harmony somewhere blew the winds of feeling somewhere streams of dejection somewhere it rained fear and anxiety and somewhere just passion and aggression all these emotions can express the result of what happened but never the reason the intention the deep emotions that swim below it is only with the heart that we can see pain see the sadness that dwells beneath love and despair anger and distress and action and reaction so says geeta men in the mode of goodness worship the demigods those in the mode of passion worship the demons and those in the mode of ignorance worship ghosts and spirits therefore according to the external activities changes the faith of believers that they adhere to at that point of time what they see and feel they get affected with so changes their mental physical and emotional strength which is drawn to them by their emotional pull just the way objects around earth are drawn to its core by gravitational pull where we decide to place our faith and what we choose to believe in particularly shapes the direction of our lives those who develop the conviction that love is the supreme importance in the world 
spend their entire life dedicating their acts to this accumulation. Those who believe that power counts more than anything else dedicate their time and energy in chasing biased posts and strained authority. Those who believe in noble values sacrifice everything to uphold them. Thus, life only reflects of what we allow our minds to perceive.